Yeah, and another one clearly that a lot of the younger generation has been rallied up about is the defunding of the police. Um, and, and obviously with, with stuff around George Floyd, that's really escalated over the past few months. Um, do you feel like defunding the police is another agenda made by, I don't know, the government or other institutions? Um, defunding the police is two things. It's a truly insane idea that some people are advancing because they don't understand. You can see what the police do wrong. Occasionally it's captured on video, for example. You cannot see the degree to which even policing that is not high quality results in a tremendous decrease in violence and other crime. And so if we were to be able to run the experiment, basically, if we could let people see what their own neighborhood would look like in the absence of policing, there'd be no question on anybody's mind about whether or not abolishing the police made any sense. Now, I am not saying that there is not justification to rethink the way we do policing. There may be. And frankly, a total revamp of policing would make sense. It may even be true that there's some way to refigure civilization so that much less policing is necessary. But you certainly can't start by eliminating the police. That will result in a massive increase in crime, which we have already seen in the places where this is being experimented with. What do you mean rethinking the, the civilization? If we understood that, for example, um, it was important to provide everybody a minimum guarantee of well-being as long as they were willing to play by civilization's rules, right? So that bad luck didn't result in you being on the street, for example, that you had a minimum quality of life that was guaranteed. But in exchange for that minimum quality of life, we expect you to play by the rules and we expect you to try to be productive and to, to discover something uh, decent you can contribute. If we had that world, many fewer people would find themselves without good options. Now, I'm not saying that this would instantaneously change anything, but over time, that would result in uh, a shift in values. And it might be, I, in fact, I would predict that it would be, that you would find much less lawlessness in such a world, in which case you could have many fewer police. They wouldn't be as necessary. Now, they will always be somewhat necessary, or at least something that does the job of the police will always be necessary. And no, it can't be self-appointed community patrols because those self-appointed community patrols are an opportunity for people who want power to pretend to do the job of the police mm. and to do something else instead. Um, but in any case, I, I believe all options should be on the table, that we should be very careful about implementing things for the reason I said up front, that unintended consequences loom very large. And so uh, one should be very cautious about upending a system that somewhat works in favor of something that hasn't been tried. Um, but uh, we should be open to this discussion. We right. should not, however, be open to the idea that you can uninvent the police suddenly and not see a massive spike in crime. That's guaranteed. Yeah. And I think you mentioned the idea of filtering people for high values and, and, and the utmost characters so that this stuff doesn't happen. And unfortunately, it's that one bad apple that kind of ruins it for the rest of the uh, police force, because oftentimes it is a minority of, of the people that have that issue. To me, at least, it doesn't seem like defunding is the issue just from like a proper training perspective, but also just from a salary perspective. I mean, how can someone be motivated living in New York City or Los Angeles getting paid $40,000 a year with inflation and and not have corruption? I mean, I, I lived in Mexico City part of the time, and this is the issue with Mexico City is that they're always looking to uh, target foreigners, which is like the worst thing you can do in a developing country that makes a lot of money from tourism and defunding it would even make that worse. I absolutely agree with you that uh, it is not clear um, that you should move in the direction of less funding. Um, certainly, I'm no fan of militarized police, but I think uh, what people need to realize is that in part, police are being used um, to keep a broken system functional. Right. They've become a punitive mechanism, which is not supposed to be their role. Uh, the solution to that could involve lots of things. But one argument is 
that you would want more funding, or at least you would want to apply more funding to salaries. So you could accumulate higher quality people who would be less prone to violence and corruption, and that that would be uh, the direction of the solution. In any case, what you can certainly say is that you do not want your policy to be formulated by a tiny number of people, um, you know, attacking federal buildings in the streets. You want policy to be formulated by people who are free to navigate these difficult issues. You want them armed with the best information that they can have at their disposal. And you want to proceed with great caution, Hmm. right? So the idea that we are suddenly defunding police in many different places because a mob in the street who does not represent the viewpoint of, I believe, any reasonable person that they are in charge of the direction of our policy is evidence that something's gone very seriously wrong. Mm. Yeah. And, and I imagine the problem with just given how long it takes to change the and pass a bill and to change the laws is that once you do it and there's severe consequences of defunding to reverse that means that number one, you have to get all of these politicians to get over their egos to admit that they weren't, that they were wrong, but so much chaos would have already upended all these major cities more than that's already happening that it's definitely yep. crazy uh, but rethinking the civilization it's that that's an interesting point that i, I do want to go over i mean it seems like you were talking about a form of ubi whether it's the exact number of a thousand dollars a month we've actually had andrew yang on would love to dig into in terms of how to make something like that possible in your in your opinion well i would say first of all i'm very interested in andrew i quite like him uh i think he's got exactly the characteristics we need in a national leader which is to say he's creative he isn't driven by ego he's clearly patriotic and so uh we need more more andrew yang you know not just in the form of andrew yang but we need more like him I'm not totally convinced that UBI is the right way to go. I think UBI has some perverse incentives built into it, uh, sort of a mini version of the problems with communism where uh, it incentivizes um, uh, free riding. Uh, So I would say the policy, though, can be upgraded to something called participation income. Participation income effectively is a UBI in exchange for uh, productivity. So this also has potential hazards built into it. But in any case, again, the solution to this is to get wise, creative people who uh, are inclined towards uh, saying the truth, irrespective of how it affects their personal well-being, to gather those people and figure out what the optimal policy is from the point of view of accomplishing the goal of something like UBI without the perverse incentives. and. no doubt we could come up with a policy that would be highly effective and for which the uh, hazards would be greatly reduced. Hmm. So pro- how would you measure something like productivity, I guess? Is it, is it number of hours work? I sure wouldn't. So anyway, I, I am not a room full of wise people. I am maybe one wise person at best. But uh, I would say you don't want a policy like that because for one thing, if you measure productivity and you reward it, especially proportionally, what you'll get is a system in which you get certain kinds of productivity and you eliminate others. So in other words, I don't want to punish somebody who gambles on a really good idea that might radically improve human well-being and then it doesn't work out. I want to reward that person. Right. Yes. If you gamble on a good idea that has uh, the potential to improve our lives and it doesn't work out, that's not on you. In fact, we want to we want that behavior to spread. So it can't be that we measure productivity. What we have to measure uh, or maybe measure is even the wrong word. What we have to incentivize is behaviors that tend to pay off over the aggregate. In other words, if it takes a thousand people failing for one person to come up with the thing that causes human well-being to increase, then we need to pay the cost of the failure of those thousand people rather than uh, have them be punished by economic jeopardy uh, when in fact they were doing our bidding all along. So. Right. 
what I want is the room full of people to figure out how do we do that so that you can't game the system so that in order to to get your participation income, you actually have to engage in behaviors that stand a good chance of uh, in improving things, um, but that you're protected for bad luck or for taking a gamble that was a good one but didn't work out, whatever the, uh, the structure is. And yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we had such conversations and policy was actually driven by them rather than the system we do have where policy is now driven by special interests that, if anything, are driven to prevent progress because progress threatens them, whereas keeping the status quo keeps them in power?